I've reported on the fact that Legacy Auto has pretty much ignored that Tesla has a new and better way to cast parts, well, the biggest parts of the car. But Chinese car companies, in particular now, Volvo and Geely, are following Tesla into die casting huge parts of the car to save time and money, reduce weight, and increase the car's structural rigidity. Here is what they're doing. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans, and I'm coming to hear from Melbourne, Australia. Fantastic to have you here on the channel. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Great to see so many new subscribers here on the channel. We've only been around for a short period of time, and in that period of time, over the last well, six months, we've made over 1,000 videos. So make sure you check out some of those videos. There's lots of stuff you can learn there. So, Volvo, what are they doing? Well, let's be honest. I mean, Geely's the parent company. They're the ones really calling the shots here. Even if you try to like to think that your Volvo is Scandinavian, it's not. It's Chinese. Sorry, but it just is. Anyway, that's besides the point. The point is here that you've got to give the Chinese automakers that are doing this credit. Copying others is... Well, it's frowned upon, even in China, people frown upon you for doing that. But the reality is, sometimes you should just suck it up and copy when another company makes a good decision, acknowledge that decision, and then follow them. And I don't understand why Legacy Auto, for the most part, have completely ignored Tesla's new die casting. Surely they must recognize the advantages it has. Volvo Cars actually announced yesterday it would invest $1.1 billion in upgrades to its plant in Sweden. A key one of which is the introduction of a large casting process. So yes, they do have a manufacturing plant in Sweden, but it is Chinese owned. Volvo Cars is the first major car maker after Tesla to publicly announce it will use the giant integrated die casting technology. Now the company is reportedly bringing it to China as well as Sweden. Volvo plans to bring the aluminium alloy one-piece casting process and battery cell to chassis C2C technology to its Chinese plants, local media said today, citing sources familiar with what was going on. Volvo became the first Chinese-owned luxury car brand when Geely Group bought 100% of its shares in August of 2010, and it's really turned the company around since it was owned by Ford. Honestly, when it was owned by Ford, uh, it was not a bad company, but it's definitely improved. The quality of the Volvo's cars has definitely improved for sure. We own a Volvo at my house and it's a decent car, but since it's been owned by Geely, I think they've definitely improved. Volvo now has three factories in China, say CNEV Post, and they will use the 8,000 ton integrated casting machines of the same casting pressure as the Giga castings that are being used by Tesla for the Tesla Cybertruck. And it's higher, it's a higher pressure than the 6,000 ton machine currently used by Tesla for the Tesla Model Y at their Giga factory in Texas. Volvo will also build a new battery assembly plant to integrate battery cells and modules into the car's chassis structure, the company said yesterday. So they're basically copying Tesla in two different areas with structural battery packs and Giga castings. And you know what? I don't care if they copy. I think this is a good move. Smart move, Volvo. Whoever made this decision, give him a pay rise. Very, very good move. Volvo will die cast the rear of the chassis with an 8,000 ton integrated casting machine. Highly flexible while reducing the complexity of production, they say, according to an interview with Mikhail Fema, head of Volvo's vehicle platform architecture, published today by tech media outlet Geek Car. Volvo are one of the first automakers, obviously, to invest in this innovative process of integrated casting technology. And you've got to admit, this is a good move. Apparently, they did not jump the gun. They took time to work out the process difficulties one by one to decide whether or not it actually was a good idea. They didn't want to just copy Tesla. They want to work out, does this make sense? Is this a good idea? Should we do this on a logical mathematical basis, not on, hey, let's, let's quickly copy them, but actually, does it make sense? Let's analyze it. Let's ignore the fact that we're going to be look, look, it's going to look like we're copying Tesla and just say, let's make the best business decision. Large scale integrated die casting technology is seen as the key to improving efficiency for electric companies. Neon Xpeng Motors are also expected to be the latest car companies to adopt the technology. I've made videos about Neo doing that 
within, I think within the last few weeks, I'll put a link in the description below to that video I made, I made about Neo's casting. There's actually apparently six different Chinese automakers that are gonna be using the same company that Tesla is using for their die casting machines. So you've got to say that little Italian company in, in Italy, they've got to be pretty stoked with the fact that Tesla has basically sold their products to six other companies for them over the past 12 months. That's a pretty big deal. Shenzhen listed auto parts supplier Guangdong Hongfu Technology held a signing ceremony on January the 22nd to launch a 6,800 ton chassis integrated structural part and 12,000 ton super die casting unit partnership. This is not Volvo, by the way. Executives from several automotive companies, including Zheng Shusang, CEO of Neo's Motor Division, XPT, congratulated the event in a recorded video at the time. So this was for Neo. Xpeng Vice President Jing Yang Ping was on hand for the event and gave a speech saying that the event was another milestone event for Guangdong Hongfu as it took a big step forward in the one piece die casting field. Xpeng, Xpeng and Neo, you know, they're making good decisions lately. And that's one of the reasons why they're outselling Legacy Auto in terms of electric car sales, even though currently they're only selling their electric cars in China and they just started in Norway. So they don't have a very big market base in terms of the number of countries they're going to. That said, Xpeng does plan on selling their electric cars in 25 different countries over the next 24 months. It's going to be a big expansion for them. Neo as well. They're expanding to a bunch of different countries in Europe and they're coming to the United States as evidenced by my video talking about them building a new big warehouse in the US and hiring people to work there, which indicates they will be selling electric cars in the US. It appears as though Neo plans to build out battery swapping stations in the US as well. And why else would you do that? Unless you were gonna actually sell your electric cars in the US. I think the US would be a good market for Neo. A lot of customers in the US probably have already heard about Neo and know about the impressive electric cars that they make. There's no information yet on whether Neo and Xpeng will use Guangdong Hongfu's large die casting machines. But Hongfu said last year that it was already in the supply chain of Neo and Xpeng without providing any further details. It does appear based on what I'm reading that both of them have signed contracts for giga casting machines with this Chinese company. So Volvo who signed the contract with Tesla supplier whereas Xpeng and Neo are using a local Chinese supplier, but there are other Chinese companies, unnamed, six others apparently, using the Tesla's supplier in Italy. What are the benefits of this die casting? Well, you probably already know a lot of them, but I'm just gonna go over them quickly again. It's important to consider this fact that Tesla, one of these die casting parts that Tesla are casting now, actually replaces 70 different parts that Tesla was welding and stamping together 70 parts so it's much more structurally structurally rigid it's lighter it's quicker on the production line there's less possible mistakes that could happen on the production line and it's stronger that's a lot of different benefits for one small change well i mean it's not a small change but it would appear to be to some people to be a small change i think it's significant i think the biggest thing that people are overlooking here is the weight now Reports that I've seen say that this gigacasting technique will re reduce the weight of Tesla Model Ys by 200 kilos. If that is the case, that would probably improve the battery by 10%. In other words, improve the range of their vehicles by 10% simply by making this change. That's huge. That's an enormous change. Because remember, if you add more batteries to a car, it increases the weight. So you don't get the same benefit from that extra size of batteries. It's like a diminishing gains because the more batteries you add, the heavier the vehicle gets. And of course, you do get more range, but the actual gain from that range is reduced each time you do it. This is one way to essentially get free range and the other benefits as well. And I absolutely love this technology, which is why I'm so baffled that Legacy Auto don't just go, yeah, all right, Tesla's right again, let's just do it. Just eat some humble pie and make the right decision. That's what I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe you know better. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Have a good day, and I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.